Holy time, Portal Batman! Welcome back to the Mushroom Kingdom of the present day. Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond, and welcome back to the world of Mario & Luigi Partners in Time. And just like that, here we are, back in our own time. Let's hustle if I over and see the good professor. If you're unsure where to find him, take a look at the top screen if you follow me. Oh, thank god he wasn't gonna redirect us as to where the stinking top screen was and be like, This is the Professor Egad icon! I think we're done with tutorials for the time being, thanks stinking god. So we can just make our way back up northwards and have a good talk with the good Professor. Good, good, good indeed. Wow, they sure cleaned up the place nicely. Hey now, back at last. Stuff will inform me that you were bringing little fellers back with you to this time. And just look at this now. They're in red and green. I am plum astounded. Get it? Plum astounded because they're plumbers? <laughs> but then again, what else would the little fellers be wearing, huh? Still, it sure tickles me to see little bros teamed up with the regular big bros. Professor, I must inform you, the Mushroom Kingdom of the past is a, in a gargantuan trouble. Hmm, so it's true, these shrewd creatures have made off with the, with the princess, eh? We gotta do something! It's the princess, man! Hmm. Guess I'll be the new princess. He's sitting in her throne, after all. Oh, how I... Oh, should... What the fruit? Oh, I should have mentioned, Professor, we recovered this at Bowser's castle in the past. I feel shame that I cannot identify it. I have no similar records in my database. Yowza! That's a cobalt star shard! The time machine's fuel source! Why was it in Bowser's castle? And how did it get broken? Good gravy! The cobalt star shard is driving the monster crazy! Hmm. Could it be? Yep, it could. I do believe there's a link between the Cobalt Star and the Shroob ma Marauders. Maybe we can figure out how to defeat those alien jerks if we find more Cobalt Star Shards! Possibly. Mario, you gotta do it! Find the other shards and rescue Princess Peach! Oh, yeah. Well, it is a star after all. I like how the characters could inexplicably see the top of the screen, like the fourth wall just always exists to them, but they never really acknowledge it. Acknowledge it! That shaking was not natural. I'd wager a new time hole just opened here in the castle. The Cobalt Star Shard is reacting to the other shards that are scattered in the past. Mario, Luigi, you youngsters get going and find those other Cobalt Star Shards! Oh, and by the way, if you care to check on the Cobalt Star Shards you've collected, just open up Stuffwell there and check his screens. Please don't give me a tutorial. Uh, of course they give me a tutorial. The screen should show you how many shards you've collected so far. There's a fair chance this new time hole will lead you to more shards. Why don't you jump on in and head back to the Mushroom Kingdom of the past? Oh, but wait. Before you go, I've got presents for you. They're badges. Yep, items that can power you fellers up. Go ahead and press start to take a gander inside Stuffwell. Oh, I remember this line. Oh, happies! I get to tell you about badges! I must tell you, I'm a big badge enthusiast. I remember I tried to, like, say, oh, happies a lot as a kid, but then I was just like, eh, forget it. <laughs> Move the magnification dingus over here and press A. I guess his way of saying magnification dingus is, like, my equivalent of saying the squiggly thing, like the control stick on a GameCube controller. Yeah, select those de de delectable badges and press A. What you see displayed are the, all the badges you found. One. If you please, if you please, select the salvage badge and then be as good as to press it. I cannot stink and read his text, my god. Now it's time to choose who will equip the fine badge. A badge only works if the person, for the person who is wearing it. So please consider carefully who will wear that badge. Select who will equip the badge and press A. Uh, let's see. So the salvage badge in particular, it gets a very slight chance of collecting items used in battle and after battle. So, basically, if this character is in a battle, then they will have a chance of gaining items at the end of it. So, 
Uh, since we're all in the group, it could pretty much go on anyone without any problems, so... I don't really have a preference. The badges don't typically up or down any of your stats, so I'm just gonna give it to whoever. And that is going to be, uh, Baby Luigi, why the heck not? Fantastical, you've equipped that tasty, tasty badge. Give your fetishes to yourself, buddy. You can see the mark over here that is, um, over here to the left of the badge name, can't you? The capital E is for adults, and the lowercase E is used for young juveniles. Kind of a clever way of showcasing it, and also the same uh, color as the bro that we have it attached to. Clothes and badges must be equipped to be of any use, as even a feeble brain can grasp. So when you get a new equipable item, be sure to use it as instructed. Yes, well, that's all for now. Back to adventure! Press the B button or start to close me. I remember my main problem with, uh why Partners in Time and uh, Superstar Saga was so difficult for me back in the day. I discovered that I never actually equipped any badges or any new uh, clothing items, which we'll get into a bit later. Uh, I, when I was like stuck on the final boss for Superstar Saga for like a million stinking years, and then I realized I have the same equipment that they give you at the beginning of the game, and I just never went to a shop once for whatever reason. Because I thought the stats were like too confusing or something, and then with super with partners in time, it was like the same thing. I never gave anyone badges, and I never got stinking equipable clothing items or anything like that. So I'm surprised I made it as far as I did, but it made its toll right at the end. So hopefully it'll be a bit easier this time around. Well, I'm gonna continue my research of this alien predator. The rest is up to you, boys. Oh, and by the by, the shroom shop on the castle's east side just opened up for business. You may want to stock up on items and whatnot before heading the next time hole. Ever so conveniently, while we're on the topic of equipable items, we could go ahead and get some more over at the shop. Go over here, and you can see there's a poster of Prince Peasley in the background. Prince Peasley is a main character from Superstar Saga. A very beloved character indeed. Uh, this guy right here sells regular items. He's got uh, mushrooms, uh, one-up mushrooms, and the refreshing herb. So you can see the uh, stash ability gives us a 22% discount, which is kind of funny. But the refreshing herb cures status ailments. I don't really ever buy those because I don't really care. Um, I very rarely run into status effects. I'm pretty sure they wear off at the end of battle, so it's very situational. Basically, if you get one in the field, that's probably much the only one you're ever going to need for the entire game. Uh, for the gear, however, I would like to get some of those. Thankfully, they do show you the stat increases for all of them, so right now we just need to get something for Luigi and the baby. So we'll get one pair of patched slacks. I like how they have wafer slacks instead. So wafer slacks and silky pants, they have a lot of funny names. Uh, gonna equip that to Luigi, make it nice and easy for us in terms of equipping them. Uh, the starchy jeans, we'll give that to baby Mario. And starchy jeans gave that to baby Luigi. Uh, how much coins do we have? 280, so we still have a bit left to work with. We do have some badges that we could get as well. We have the wallet badge, which makes it so we drop almost no coins when fleeing from a battle. We haven't really seen that yet. You do lose a bunch of coins whenever you try and run from a battle. I very rarely run, so I don't really have a need for this. Uh, we could get another salvage badge if you just like this badge so stinking much you want to use it on more characters, then you can get uh, more of them right here. The easy badge, which simplifies attack item commands. Uh, I might want that actually because of the spinning uh, shell, but I don't know, it's not too difficult. I just very rarely use the spinning feature. Pep badge, which becomes impervious to all status effects. That's actually pretty good. And training badge, use as many attacks and items as you like, but lose a lot of power for practice. So basically you could only... Um, if you have this equipped to every single bro, you could have just one of every bro item uh, in your inventory. You don't have to buy multiple versions of them over and over. And you could just use them as much as you want, but they are significantly uh, less powerful in that case. So for that reason, I don't really like to get it. So the only one I would actually really want is the pep badge. But again, I very rarely run into status ailments to begin with. So uh, I think for now, I'm just going to save my money. Come on back! Oh wait, actually, we're gonna want to sell our things, because the selling wasn't automatically what would be an Earthbound, uh, for example. But basically, what I usually do is I keep all the badges, because those are universal, they'll always be useful uh, up until the end of the game, but the uh, equipable pants and overalls and stuff, that's a uh, determinant on, like, those usually get stacked and whatnot, so I have no use for them once we get them replaced, so... My advice is just keep all your badges, sell all your unused pants, I guess you could say. 
Uh, this is where all the tourists who visit the castle buy their souvenirs, you know? But they just said they just opened for business. Uh, folks eat them raw and say stuff like rich flavor and gray texture and gross. Okay, cool. Uh, I guess there's nothing else for us to really do here. I believe uh, any other areas in the castle will be blocked off to us. And we'll see it all in due time, so I don't want to like get too ahead of myself and just showing things that we don't need to see just yet. We'll have it all spaced out and proportionately examined and experienced, I suppose. I just sort of want to like peek around just a little tiny bit just to see if we have any like stray question mark blocks that we can reach right now. But it doesn't seem to be the case, so I guess we could just head on out of here. And go down this hole. Not down this hole, but down this hallway. The whole way. I got a feeling something terrible is going to happen. I mean, look, this room's got that eerie gear over there. Something's gonna happen. Plus my spots. Plus my spots. Uh, we can't do anything about this yet, so we're just gonna keep on going southward. And eventually, we make it into, I believe this is Toadsworth's room, now that I think about it. Uh, no, it is not. It's like a guest bedroom for Mario and Luigi or something like that. It was always weird to me that, like, Mario, at least Mario didn't leave, live in the castle with Peach, even though they're getting it on, apparently, but, uh, I guess they have guest bedrooms instead. But whatever, we got ourselves into the time hole, let's see where it leads us. VILLAIN! I dare say that is her! That child you're holding, sir, she's the princess, is she not? Keep your distance! You're not clear to address her royal highness! In the short time she's been gone, she's grown so small! This is why I was so opposed to that infernal time machine! Someone! Anyone! Princess! Villain! Help someone! Is this castle deserted? Princess! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Toadwood Forest is our next destination. Oh boy, this place. Kid me spent a lot of singing time here, that's for sure. We got ourselves a save album right here. I'll hold off on using it just for the time being. Rather finish the recording, make sure everything turns out okay before doing that. You do have two save files per cartridge, but I kind of wish you, would, you were able to save on them like during during the game. But you're gonna have to like exit out to the main menu to uh, copy save files and whatnot, so it's kind of annoying. Got ourselves bro flowers. Those are a new type of bro items we could show off later, and two mushrooms as well. What you want to do is throw the babies up here under the tree stumps, and they can fall right down and get some items. Mushroom drops, and they poop out a hundred coin for us. Uh, this spring thankfully only needs two bros, because if it needed four, then we'd be doomed. Pick them up and walk over here. I'm just gonna collect more collectibles. And hello, that thing in the corner of the screen looks kind of familiar. Uh, let's get that. And yeah, it's a toad strapped to a tree. Huh, could we talk to them by any chance? Doesn't seem like it. That's pretty creepy. Oh, here's another one. Help me. That's really disturbing, all things considered. And hello, new enemy. Go, 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 let's go. I always like how they said that. So we got new enemies, the Koopleons. Like a Koopa, but it's a, a I almost said Kecleon, a chameleon. Uh, they turn invisible when they come and attack you, so you just sort of have to uh, go along with the timing and the dust clouds and try and guess where they are, I guess. You still see them ever so slightly, so they're not completely invisible, but you mainly just want to focus on the dust cloud and on timing in general, so... Get rid of him. Uh, just gonna go hit him once more. And him. I guess this would be a good time to show off the bro flowers. I'm always so stingy with my items, though. Eh, maybe not, we'll just keep on going, because we were doing so much damage to them with the counterattacks, so I feel like it's not necessary to use it right now. I'd rather use it, like, at the beginning of the battle when I haven't done any damage yet. Go do that one more time, and baby Mario, there you go. Go and get that experience and money. And jump up here. So things are already seeming even more grim and gruesome than they were in Holly Jolly Village, so let's see exactly what's going on. Mario. Miss. 
Mr. Mario! Mr. Mario! I am called Todiko. I was on time. The time machine with Princess Peach. As, as soon as we arrived this time, we were attacked. A fierce alien race known as Shroobs. They came out of nowhere. Oh, oh my goodness! What's happened here? Yeek! Who are you? Princess Peach was taken by the shrooms, and I was captured by the trees of this forest. These trees, they're slowly but surely siphoning away all our mushroom power, our vim, the pure vim that flows through the roots of the trees deep, deep underground. It is gathered at the Shroom Vim Factory in the heart of the forest. <laughs> Rumor has it, the mushroom power is somehow changed at the Vim Factory. It's mixed with awful chemicals and becomes the fuel for the Shroom's flying saucers. Mario, you must leave me. Hasten to the Vim Factory. It is all that matters now. Somewhere in that horrid place is a, a cobalt star shard. I just know it. The cobalt star and Princess Peach. Whenever I try thinking back on this game and try and remember some of its memorable characters, Todiko is always one that slips my mind because she's incredibly memorable in, in such a deep and dark scene very early on in the game, but the reason I have such a hard time remembering her is that she's gone so stinking quickly. It's stinking terrifying. Like, I remember this really making me uncomfortable as a kid. Like, having her, like, turn into a mushroom or, like, a poisonous shrew like that. It was just really stinking unsettling. And there's no shortage of that throughout this game, as I've shown and said m many times already. And it keeps on getting darker and darker. This game does a... I don't think the story's, like, as emotional as, say, the Paper Mario games are able to do, but... In terms of just being really stinking dark, I think this game has a very easy time of portraying that sort of thing. Uh, we got more bro flowers. We got more toads trapped to these trees, just having the entire life sucked out of them. My god, like, I, on one hand, I kind of wish that these characters were more prominent, but, like, just the fact that they were taken out of the story the way that they were so stinking quickly, that speaks volumes in and of itself, and I don't even know what to say about it. It's just very unsettling. And speaking of, of unsettling, that's sort of, sort of something that I really like seeing in, not just in Mario games, but like, Mario games definitely have a, are a highlight of it for me because it's just very out of left field whenever it does happen. But any sort of a uh, story or game that is like in a long running series, but then takes a complete drastic turn and does something completely different. I absolutely love that stuff because I just like having a, a completely different experience from something I've already uh, seen before but also just having 
um, being able to show off these characters that are seen as rather childish or in uh, lighthearted environments in a completely different uh, set and whatnot, um, if you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, here we have a new enemy, the Elasto Piranha, aka the upcoming Smash Bros. DLC. It's a piranha plant inside of a pipe. Uh, he will stretch out his neck and make it so it's kind of hard to see where the attack is coming from. So you sort of have to work with uh, eyeing up uh, where it's going to land. And you can also see a little bit of a shadow right when it's about to land, so you can use that to your advantage as well. Uh, but when you send him a bit backwards, then that means he's probably going to go for Baby Luigi. So I guess you could use that as well. Uh, yeah, remember he has a lot of singing defense. Uh, I think he's immune to fire. And speaking of fire... Uh, if you get hit one more time, then that's actually going to be really bad. When you're burned, you can't move, so hopefully don't hit Baby Mario, thank you. Uh, and that's really unfortunate. So, it's imperative that you do not let uh, your partners die, so unfortunately I'm going to have to use uh, one of Mushroom right now. Because not only will Baby Mario not get experience at the end of this battle if he's fainted at the end of it, but when Baby Luigi's turn comes up to him for him to dodge, he's going to have to carry Baby Mario on his back, and that slows his jump. So it makes it even more difficult to dodge, and they kind of punish you for having characters fainted. So it is very much uh, in your best interest to keep uh, both characters alive at the same time. If it's a situation where you have a battle of four, like say you have Mario, Luigi, Baby Mario, Baby Luigi, and then Luigi faints, Baby Luigi will actually just drag Luigi off screen and then it'll just be uh, the three of them fighting. So you don't have to worry about that in that case. So whenever the big bros get knocked out, then they'll be moved off screen and then it'll get switched over to the babies. But say if you have Luigi and Baby Luigi go down, then Mario will carry both babies on his shoulders that will end up slowing his jump. So just make sure you don't have characters die, even if you don't want to waste the one up mushrooms, it's very much in your best interest because chances are you will end up getting a game over if you're careless. And in terms of game overs, how they work in this game, I believe it is that you go back to your last save point. And for someone like me who isn't saving, uh, I'd rather not have that happen. Uh, can we talk to him? I don't think we can, but yeah. Uh, we got a new enemy right here. It is not a shy guy, but is it called a ghoul guy? He points at the one he's going to go for. Uh, yeah, he splits into two, so it looks like he's going to attack both of you, but no, yeah, just only one of them is real. A boo guy. Very mu a lot more creative. Not really. But yeah, something I was just trying to talk about is just I how I like uh, games and shows going out of the norm and doing something completely different that makes it seem very unsettling. It doesn't even have to be dark. It could just be like something giving the characters a completely different environment that they're not used to and uh, seeing how they interact in it. A very good example would be Mario plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. I recently finished that game. I was uh, I was very behind on it and I finally got the chance to beat it entirely. And I gotta say, I was 100% wrong about that game and I need to apologize for that because I was one of the people who was very negative and did not accept it at first glance because it was Rabbit's and I was very upset with it and I was like, why would they have a Mario and Rabbit's collaboration? It's just so dumb. But as when I finally started to play it, it was immensely entertaining and it was exactly what I love about video games and what I love about just uh, the whole aspect of putting characters in unfamiliar environments that I was talking about. I've talked a lot in the past about how I love Idolmaster Xenoglossia, which is a Idolmaster anime that has them in mechs in a post-apocalyptic Earth that has them in mech suits fighting each other in, in like a war setting that has nothing to do with the singing aspect. And it is a completely different experience from just the singing aspect and it makes me so uncomfortable, but I love it because of that because it's so different and unique. And it's characters that I am familiar with and I am attached to, but I get to see them in this different environment and I get to like them or dislike them for different reasons, which is really cool. But with Mario and Rabbids, it was a phenomenal game. The gameplay's phenomenal, the music's amazing, I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that, the graphics are good. And the characters, I love seeing them interact with like these dark and twisted rabbits and everything. And the rabbits that travel with you, they're not super annoying. They are actually using like pretty good humorous situations that are actually intelligent and whatnot. And when I was thinking back on it, I don't know if I ever was in the crowd of hating rabbits. I feel like the minions really made me hate the rabbits a lot more because I hated the minions and the rabbits, um, even though they came first, once I saw the comparison between the two, I was like, I could not unsee the similarities between them. But I remember I was always intrigued by the rabbits because Raven, Rayman Raving Rabbits was my second Wii game. 
and that game ends on such a weird note. I apologize if you don't want spoilers for Raven Rabbit, so I guess you could sort of... Uh, you know what, Teresa, pop up on the screen. When you disappear, I'll, I'm done spoiling Rayman Raving Rabbit's games in case anyone's concerned about that. But uh, in terms of just, like, uh, the first game, it ends on such a weird note. So the game has Rayman getting kidnapped and, like, thrown into this uh, coliseum where he has to fight for his life for the rabbit's amusement. And it ends off with, like, every time he clears a challenge, he gets a toilet plunger, and he ends up creating, like, a staircase in his jail cell out of toilet plungers to uh, escape uh, through a window at the top or whatever. But the game ends with him realizing that he left behind all those glow boxes that he uh, is friends with, and they're all still suffering in there, so he wants to go back for them. He tries to go back through the rabbit hole that he uh, sneaked out from, but he gets stuck, and then the game just ends like that, with him stuck in a hole, not being able to do anything. I was wondering, like, is it a bad ending? Is there something I messed up on? But no, that's the legit ending of the game. It's just like, oh no, I forgot to save those other guys. Let me go save them. Oops, I'm stuck. Game over. That's it. And that always confused the heck out of me, and I just uh, didn't really know what to think of it after that. Um, I remember another thing was in... Uh, the sequel, I didn't uh, pick up any other Rayman game after that. Uh, I don't know if it was just like lack of interest or just money at the time or whatever, but I just never wound up getting Rayman Raving Rabbits 2, but I did look up the cutscenes and the plot and stuff, but the second game takes, uh, picks up not from the last game, so it's like it doesn't explain what happened to those glow boxes or whatever, but Rayman's just still examining the rabbits and stuff, and he sees them in a factory or something. Um, he tries to infiltrate their ranks by uh, disguising himself as one of them, but as far as I'm aware, it doesn't have an, any actual ending. It has a beginning cutscene where it shows him like starting things up, but then there's no extra cutscene afterwards, which I don't get. And the rabbits, I didn't see them as being like obnoxious and stupid. I saw them as like torture, like not really tortured souls, but like they were just terrifying because like they were clearly intelligent. They were like they had some sort of plan going on. They wanted to achieve something. But they were just very quick to set off. Like, if you just do one thing, it makes them go ballistic. And that's what sort of intrigued me about it. Because it was that... It's not that they're stupid or doing th dumb things because they think it's funny. It's that they are uncontrollable. And they're, like, filled with so much rage. And if you set them off, then they go insane. Which I thought was really awkward and whatnot. Uh, I think speed was what we were going for. Three speed. Cool. Uh, Baby Luigi level six. And look at all that. Let's see and go to speed as well. And of course, it's just one. But yeah, um, the second game doesn't really have any sort of plot other than the opening cutscene. And it was just intriguing to see they are clearly intelligent in some regard, but it's uh, never really explained what their uh, goal is other than to just take over the world. The third game, uh, TV Party, I believe it's called, like Ray Raymond Rabbit's TV Party or whatever. Uh, he's running away from them and then he hides in his house and the rabbits get locked inside of his TV and like he's just getting tortured by them by having to put up with their nonsense inside of his TV and I think the game just ends off with like uh, just a series of mini games and he eventually gets fed up with them and he ends up leaving and the game just sort of ends with like him running away from them again. So not a whole lot of story in that regard as well. So I've always been intrigued about the rave the rabbit games but they never seem to give me what i'm looking for i wanted to see where the story goes and what these guys are like all about and i remember i was doing a bit of research uh, after i finished uh mario and rabbits because i just wanted to like learn more about them and stuff and see if there was any sort of plot in the games that i uh didn't play because after tv party uh they just stopped playing they stopped making the rayman uh a part of the rabbit games they just had them uh, focus solely on the rabbits I know there was one about them, uh, Rabbits Go Home, which I thought was going to be the last one. It was about them trying to go to the moon because I think that's their home or something like that. So they just collect all the junk in the world so they could create a tower that leads them to the moon or something. But then they get like a time traveling washing machine and that's what leads to Mario plus Rabbits. So they could uh, go into that dimension and start doing stuff in there. It's really awkward. But yeah, what you're going to want to do is like send the babies into this area. I'm sorry I'm not talking about the game at all right now, but like this is a topic that I really wanted to discuss. I know that this area was kind of long, so I thought this would be a good time to start talking about it. You're going to want to just start knocking these fireballs up into these uh, blocks, and then the big bros will push them up into the other block. But right now we're just going to keep on going through here in this fashion. But something really interesting that I found out was, I think, is it the Game Boy Advance version or the DS version? I think... It was it sounds more logical for it to be the DS version. Uh, for Rayman Raving Rabbids, the first Rayman game, or the first Rabbids game, it had a DS version. Like, back then, it was very common for, like, games to have uh, multiple 
titles of the same name but on different consoles like a lot of third-party tv show based games like spongebob squarepants battle for bikini bomber anything like that uh they got games on like handhelds and on consoles which were completely different games because it's completely different hardware you can't create the same game you can't replicate it that way uh and have it be the same so they just have the same title but um and maybe the same plot but completely different gameplay and content and whatnot and in the ds version of the original raving rabbits uh, there's like a fairy or something who tells Rayman about the rabbits and she says to him that the rabbits were uh, Originally very peaceful creatures and they were normal. They weren't crazy at all, but it turns out that they were abused by uh, Several other creatures in the forest that they were from and it drove them to insanity And that's why they're like the way they are today And that was just really fascinating to read like the fact that we all see them as super annoying and crazy and stuff but it turns out that it's not out of nowhere. Some the reason they, they get set off so quickly is because they were abused for such a long time. And yeah, any sort of slight thing will tick them off because they feel so unsafe around everyone. So that would explain why they only feel safe around their own kind and why they are trying to take over humanity. And I wish that was just a thing. So I never really had a problem with the rabbits. The minions made me hate them a lot more because I've seen the minions movies and they are complete garbage. I'm not going to go on my way to defend any of them for being intelligent or whatever. But the rabbits just sort of got grouped into that because they just seem so similar from an outsider's point of view. And sort of because due to the fact that uh, the rabbits games didn't really do a good job of portraying the story that they seem to have wanted to tell with them. It was just that I do like the idea of them, how they're uh, these corrupted beings who... Uh, became the way they are because they were abused so much like that was the word they used they were abused and like harassed or whatever uh by other creatures and it drove them to insanity and um i like that idea and i wanted to see more of it but you don't really get to see that because they don't show it in the games themselves you just sort of have to piece together what information they gave you um through like uh, a singular cutscene that doesn't have any sort of end game or end goal to it so yeah, that's sort of my story of it. And with Mario and Rabbids, they certainly don't answer any of those questions. They don't answer any sort of Rabbids uh, lore that you've been dying to find out about or anything like that. It just sort of uh, tells a completely different story with Rabbids and, it, and Mario. So the Rabbids are with you. They are intelligent. Like if they're designed to look like a good guy, then they help out the good guys. But if they're designed to look like anything else, then they're guys they get, uh, have to fight. As for why the guns are there, it's just sort of like, oh, hey, they're here. Might as well use them. It's just... It's so completely out there and doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but it is something entirely new and I love playing it. So Mario Plus Rabbids, if you were on the fence on whether or not it would be a good game, it is phenomenal. I highly recommend it. And yeah, I guess you could just take this as a sign to maybe give the Rabbids games another chance. I don't really have any experience with them, though I've only played the first one. I, I did enjoy it for what it was worth, but looking back on it, it's probably just like a very, very early Wii party game. So... If that's your, if you're into that sort of thing, then be my guest to play. But I think some of the other Rabbids games are a bit different. I think Rabbids Go Home is a platform, like a 3D platform or something like that, which is kind of weird. But uh, yeah, I know a lot of people ha uh, have a lot of grudges towards the Rabbids because they took the spotlight away from Rayman, and that's a character that a lot of people grew up with and really liked. But it is still, um, Rayman's still around with like his Origins and Legends games that were really successful and. Uh, the Rabbids are able to do something incredibly magical with the Mario and Rabbids game, and I certainly hope we see Ubisoft do something else with them in the future, because it very clearly shows that they like these characters and they want to keep them around and create something that's never been seen before with them. Anyway, I think we're done for this episode. We're already 30 minutes in. I was not expecting to have the entire episode just me be talking about Rabbids, but here you go. That's the end of it. Next time on Mario & Luigi Partners in Time, we are going to explore the outer workings of the Vim factory and see if we can make our way inside. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.